challenges facing global pharmacy workforce, prefer solutions. Nigeria students implore to have high values. Sean Coulterson, President Buhari to inaugurate Network Against Crimes in Gulf of Guinea. ECOWAS, others hold workshop on peace ahead of Sierra Leone election. Before the news in detail, here is a special message. Governor Chukuma Saludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Empress State economy and promotion of coable values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. Good morning. Welcome to the News at 7 right here on ABS Television. I am Friska Mwanko. Christians have been advised to live their life in accordance with anticipation of the coming of Christ. A guest preacher, evangelist, and Nam the Aze, who gave the advice for delivering a message in the church service held at Anglican Girls Grammar School, Old Road, Moor, noted that our relationship with God and people and how we live our life matters a lot. Speaking on the theme, Behold He that cometh with the topic, Occupy till I come. Evangelist Aze stated that patience and endurance are two cardinal words that help a Christian to occupy till the end, advising them to strive and fulfill their divine assignments and the purpose of their existence. Earlier in his exposition, Professor Solomon Weibo stated that every child of God must beware of the riches of the world, warning the material things are the devil's strong weapon in pulling people away from the faith and place of dominion in Christ, which includes pleasure of life and cares of this life. Professor Weibo, who charged Christians, let the light shine before all men, advised believers to come back to where they met the Lord at first, stressing the need for restoration of their first love. In his remark, the area chairman, Scripture Union Nigeria, Obosi area, evangelist Innocent Chikilwe, advised the congregation to never cast away their confidence in God, reminding them of the certainty of the coming of Christ and encouraged them to continue to hold fast on the confession of faith without wavering, for he the promise is faithful. The service featured prayer session, praises and worship, thanksgiving, and special rendition by the choir. An environmental scientist, Professor Leo Mohalo, has blamed the Russian menace, ravaging parts of Anambra State and lack of consideration for the environment in construction and urban planning. Correspondent Chukwemeka Modeling reports that Professor Mohalo disclosed this in Oka during World Earth Day celebration while delivering a lecture on flood menace in Anambra State, causes, prevention, and remediation, a call for community participation. Professor Mohalo lamented the flood occasion by building on waterways and poor urban planning were responsible for over 1,000 active erosion sites in the state. He said, cutting of trees without replacement, nature of Anambra soil, blocking of drainage channels with solid waste by the people are also responsible for the worsening erosion problem in the state. Professor Mohalo stressed the need for the people to change their behavior towards the environment by avoiding activities that aid environmental degradation to restore the environment. The university zone called on Anambra State government to carry out proper planning of urban areas in Anambra State, encourage tree planting in erosion-prone areas, as well as enact effective laws that will arrest erosion to reclaim the state from environmental degradation. Inadequate training capacity, poor remuneration, and immigration for better opportunities have been identified as part of challenges facing global pharmacy workforce, resulting in a shortage of personnel in low- and middle-income countries. Correspondent Joseph Ebocha reports that a resource person at the maiden induction ceremony of pharmacy graduates of Chukwameka of the Mego Juku University, pharmacist Valentine Okelu, disclosed this in a keynote address titled Global Pharmacy Workforce Trends and Challenges. The reports. Pharmacist Okelu listed other challenges to include significant skills gaps in emerging areas of pharmacy practice, lack of training opportunities for pharmacists, regulatory barriers that limit the ability of pharmacists to expand scope of practice, increasing emphasis on collaborative care, and the growing need for pharmacists to take on expanded roles in healthcare like providing vaccinations, conducting medication reviews, and managing chronic health conditions such as diabetes and hypertension. To address these and other challenges, pharmacist Okelu called for multifaceted approach that involves policymakers, regulators, educators, professional associations, including the pharmacists themselves. 
on how pharmacy graduates can surmount the challenges and align with the trends in the industry workforce, the resource person recommended continuing education to equip themselves with the knowledge and skills needed to succeed in patient-centered and technology-driven healthcare system prone to global influences, collaboration with other healthcare professionals to provide coordinated care as well as innovation to be able to adapt to the changing healthcare landscape and be willing to embrace new technologies to improve patient care. And within the next one, two years, we're going to establish a reputation, either for good or for bad. And I'm sure you're going to ensure that the reputation you're going to establish will be for good, right? Contributing, the Registrar of Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, Pharmacist Ibrahim Ahmed, represented by Head of Department of Education and Training, Pharmacy Council of Nigeria, Dr. Anthony Doko, said the Council is aware of the challenges posed to pharmacists by the dynamics of practice, technology advancements, increasing disease burdens, adverse drug reactions, among others, adding that the Pharmacy Council of Nigeria institutionalized continuing professional development CPD program to ensure proficiency and continued relevance of pharmacists in healthcare team with patients in focus. He explained that implementation of the continuing professional development program is in line with the resolutions of the World Health Organization, WHO, and the directives of the Federal Ministry of Health issued at Midden Health Summit in 1996. Deputy Director of News and Current Affairs, Anambra Broadcasting Service, ABS, Mrs. Shinyere Obiejesi, Anambra State Chairman of APGA, Sanobat Obi, among other parents of the inductees, attended the ceremony held at the Barian campus of the university. In Oka, Joseph Ebosha reporting for ABS News. The Vice Chancellor of Chukwemeka Odumegu Juku University Ibariam campus, Professor Greg Wakubi, has implored Nigerian students to have high values and devote their time to their academic studies for posterity and sharing cultism. Professor Wakubi will give the advice at the Faculty of Physical Sciences on the campus of the university during her 24th matriculation ceremony told the students that cultism will not only ruin their life, but careers and families. Correspondent Emmanuel Chibata reports that Professor Wakobi, who spoke through the Dean of the Faculty, Professor Kingsley Mozo, reminded the students that cultism is prescribed by the law of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and membership of any cult group is an offense punishable by law. The reports. In addition, the Vice Chancellor told them that the federal government had many years ago directed universities across the country to expel any member of any court group from the universities and to hand over such students to the police for prosecution. Professor Wakobi therefore enjoined them to say no to cultism and report to school authorities if anyone approaches them to join a secret cult. The university done further asked them to study assiduously, have a change in attitude and behavior as well as keep their goals constantly before them and avoid distractions that may lead them away from their academics. He urged parents and guardians to always find time to visit their children and wards in the university as such will be useful to them. I now admit you formally to membership of Chukwu Emeka of Neku Kojuku University and enjoy you to live up to the expectations of the university as pledged in your matriculation bar. Congratulations. Emmanuel Shibata for ABS News. The Anambra State Library Board, in collaboration with the Nigeria Library Association Anambra State Chapter, has celebrated the 2023 World Book and Copyright Day with inmates at the Nigerian Correctional Service, Oka Custodial Center. The celebration was also used to donate learning materials to the inmates to help build themselves. Correspondent Blessing Uchendo has the details. Addressing the inmates, the acting director of Anambra State Library Board, Mrs. Obioma Obalom, said the day which is celebrated on the April 23rd of every year was set aside by UNESCO to talk about authors, books, copyright and reading and encourage the inmates to improve on their reading culture by reading two or three books a day to widen their knowledge. The essence of the World Book Day is to encourage people to read, to read. We call it everybody to read, and not just to read to pass exam, but to read to acquire knowledge, to read to widen their areas, to read to become more knowledgeable. That's why we are celebrating it. On our part, the Anambra State Chairman of NLA, Dr. Ngozi Osuchuku, who spoke on the theme of this year's celebration, 
indigenous language called on the inmates to always promote their mother tongue, especially Igbo language, so that it will not go into extinction. We are encouraging people to speak Igbo, speak your language, write it if you can, even if you have the highest education or you live abroad, it's good that you keep that your local language and you speak it in your families. Responding, the assistant controller in charge of Oka Custodial Center, Reverend Solomon Mba, commended the team for the minute wise to celebrate the day with them, even as he noted that reading is very essential to life and encouraged the inmates to always read and write, even as he assured them of making the center's library available for them at all times. The celebration featured inspection of the Oka Custodial Center Library and donation of books and toiletries to the inmates. Blessing Uchendo, ABS News. President Muhammad Buhari is expected to declare open a national conference on organized crime in Nigeria and the Gulf of Guinea on Friday in Portacos, River State Capital. Also, the president will flag off the construction of the Center of Excellence and a 100 bed specialist hospital, among other projects, of the Hydrocarbon Pollution Remediation Project, HYPREP, in Ogoni Land on the same date. The conference, which is organized by Youth and Environmental Advocacy Center, Yacht Nigeria, in partnership with Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime and the Resilience Fund, Austria, is due to the speed of crude oil attempts and illegal bunkering, kidnapping, banditry, terrorism, racketeering, human, drugs, arms smuggling, illegal fishing, and sea piracy. Executive Director of Yacht Nigeria, Fine Face, Duma Mene said that the conference would see to the official launching of the network on organized crime in Nigeria and Gulf of Guinea, no CNAC. The Department of Political Affairs, Peace and Security of the ECOWAS Commission in partnership with the Sierra Leone Independent Commission for Peace and National Cohesion held a training and interactive workshop with political actors and stakeholders and peaceful elections ahead of the forthcoming presidential and parliamentary elections in the country scheduled for the 24th of June, 2023. The joint ECOWAS African Union pre-election fact-finding mission have been deployed to the country from the 12th to the 4th of April 2023 to assess the level of preparedness for the elections by the lecture management bodies, EMBs, which this workshop and other political actors and institutions workshop are part of the Commission's strategic and operational support to member states holding elections. Conscious that election periods are moments of heightened political tension, the workshop whose participants were drawn from political parties, the Election Commission of Sierra Leone, ECSL, the Political Parties Regulatory Commission, PPRC, the Office of the National Security, ONS, and the Sierra Leone Police, the Inter-Religious Council and Traditional Authorities, the Independence Commission for Peace and National Cohesion, ICPNC, civil society organization and the media is aimed at contributing to the enhancements of participants' dialogue and mediation skills to create space for interactive engagement and opportunity to sensitize the population on the ECOWAS thematic principles and frameworks on democracy and good governance. It also examines inclusive participatory processes which would enable free, fair, transparent and credible elections in the country. It will be recorded that similar workshops were organized in the lead up to the 2023 general elections in Nigeria, as well as around the electoral processes of several other member states. President of Nigeria's Scrabble Federation, NSF, Toke Akar, has promised that the body will assemble a formidable team for the African Youth Scrabble Championship, as well as the Pan African Scrabble President's Cup, belt to hold in August in Lagos. Mr. Aka said that the players for the tournament will be selected from top Scrabble playing schools and academics across the country to challenge over 220 young players from across Africa at the Panasa Youth Championship. He added that the youth event will hold at the same time with the President's Cup, while revealing that Botswana has already named the 28 man list for the Panasa Championship, just as Kenya is currently conducting its national trials to select its team from over three kids. Over 150 players of about 25 countries are expected to congregate in Lagos from August 24 to 28, 2023 for the Maiden Panasa President's Cup, an African Scrabble Youth Championship. 
Remember, you can follow ABS on many parts of the world by liking our Facebook page at ABS Radio Television Orca. Subscribe to our YouTube page at ABS Television Orca. Follow us on Instagram at ABS Radio TV. You can also log on to our website, www.absradiotv.com. To end the news this morning, a recap of the main points. Stakeholders have identified challenges facing global pharmacy workforce. Preferred solutions Nigerian students have been employed to have high values, Sharon Coulterson. President Buhari is to inaugurate Network Against Crimes in Gulf of Guinea. ECOWAS, others to hold workshop on peace ahead of Sierra Leone elections. Governor Chukwu Masaludo has come for a total turnaround maintenance of the Adam State economy and promotion of core Igbo values. Let's give him maximum support for the task ahead. And that ends the news at this time on ABS Television. Thanks for watching. I am Priska Monko. Good morning.